to heal us and deliver us from every destruction. So, Father, tonight as we gather together around your word, we ask you, Father, to speak to our hearts tonight. Let us see what we've never seen before. Let us hear what we've never, hear, never heard before. And we thank you that we'll never be the same. We'll be transformed from the inside out. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. All right, let's get into this again tonight. We started talking, we've been talking about mountain moving faith. And we're going to get back into this again tonight because the spirit of God has really has had me stirred up about this message. We've been, and we started talking about let, Sunday, let the word do the work. And we're going to get back into that tonight. Come on, shout. I got to let the word do the work. Now, in order to let the word do the work. You got to look at that title for a minute. Let the word do the work. Let the word do the work. Let the word do the work. So what does that mean? I have to give that word permission to work. I got to give God permission to work. A lot of times we're not even giving God permission to work. We're not even giving God permission to work. We're not even giving the Holy Spirit permission to work. Because when you say let the word do the work, that's what you're saying. Let God do the work. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. So in order for me to do that, I have to, I have to step back and trust God. I have to step back and trust the system of God. I have to step back and trust that the word of God can do more than what I can do. Even though I'm used to used to doing things my own, I'm used to because if I don't do it, nobody else will. If I don't change it, nobody else will. If I don't handle it, it won't get handled. If I, you know, that mindset we've all we've all we've been trained to have that I got to do it versus not relying on the word of God and allowing the word of God to do it. But we all been trained to do that. But that's why getting our minds renewed, renewing our minds to the word of God. Coming into the kingdom of God, realizing that, wait a minute, if I'm going to experience the abundant life that Jesus said I can experience, then I got to trust the word of God that God, God knows better than me. Amen. And just like Psalm 18 and 30 said, ask for God, his way is perfect. Now, since his way is perfect, then I need to trust that way. Amen. But in order to do that, I got to let him do the work. I can't lean to my own understanding. I got, I got to acknowledge him and trust him that he know how to get it done. Amen? Amen. Now, in order to really do that tonight, let's go to Romans 15. Let's start there tonight. We're gonna, because I want to lay a good foundation and to uh, show you some things tonight that we might, a lot of times we miss when it comes to faith. But Romans chapter 15, look at verse 4. I want to show you something here. I got some ringing going on there. Yeah. Praise God. So are you there? In Romans 15, let the word do the word. Let me lay a foundation first. In Romans 15, look at verse 4. He said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for what? Our learning. Our learning that we through patience and what? Comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. That's why I made the statement. Yeah, that yeah, kind of worked with me a little bit. That's why I made the statement that I made earlier about us coming together. And that and it's because this one scripture right here jumped out at me, verse 15, when he said that 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 uh, we be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. That is important that we take on the mind of Christ. But now, in, with that, look what verse 4 said. He said, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. It was written for what? Our learning. The scriptures were written for our learning. Watch this here. Not only that, it says that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures. So while I am trusting God and waiting on God to turn things, or I would just say this, well, while I'm waiting on the word to turn some things around or trusting the word in a situation, my patience 
and my comfort is going to come through the scriptures. You see that? Through patience and comfort of the scriptures, my have hope. My comfort comes from the word. That's where I'm supposed to find comfort in. I'm not, I'm not supposed to find comfort in other things other than the word of God. The word of God will cause comfort in other things, but the comfort must first come from the word. While I'm waiting for the word to change something. Because what happens a lot of times, we, we want to find our own comfort through the fire. In the fire, we try to find our own comfort. What's going to be comfortable for us? And 99% and, and of the time, how I'm going to find comfort through any fire is getting out of the fire. Are oh, you listening to me? But look what happened with Daniel and the lions then. Look what happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, I'm going to use them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, while they were in the fire. God took the fire out of it. The heat out of it. Why? They was able to abide in a place and find comfort in that place. Are you listening to me? So when we're talking about letting the word do the work, this is the reason why I'm sharing with you about letting the word do the work because a lot of people say, well, pastor, that's easy for, see you. It's easy for you to say, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm facing. And I, I'm, not, I'm not belittled anything that you're going through because I don't know every one of your tolerance level. Amen. You know, because everybody's tolerance level are different. My tolerance level is different from yours. The next, person, the next person's tolerance level is different from the next person. But there's comfort in the scripture. Amen. <laughs> Man, you, you, you got to see that. There's comfort in the word of God. That's where you can find comfort. Amen. Amen. Now what can this here? So let's go a little bit further. Go to Romans chapter 4. But I wanted you to see the part where it says the, uh, the things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. Come on, shout, the word of God was written for our learning. The word of God was written for our learning. Now, Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, look at verse, uh, we're going to look at verse 21. In Romans chapter 4, was written for our learning, was written for our learning. The word of God was written for our learning. Romans chapter 4, look at verse 21 right quick. Now, nah, let's go back up. Verse 19. <laughs> you know how I do. Verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered not his own body. He considered not his own body being dead. Look at verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Come on, shout, I am strong in faith. Strong in faith. Now, there are two things here I want you to see so far. Number one, he said, being not weak in faith. Being not weak in faith. Look what happens, look what happens because he wasn't weak in faith. He didn't consider his own body. In other words, he did not let his own body rule him. He didn't let his own body talk to him about what God said. He knew what God said, so he, he did not let his own body take, take ownership or take control of the situation. Are you seeing that there? He considered not his own body. He was not weak in faith uh, when he was about 100 years old. Number verse 20 said, this is the second thing. Verse 20 said, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't let what, the, what at first he did, because at first he said, now, now God, how, how is it that me being, you know, being this age, how is it I'm going to have a child? And God told him, okay, give me a turtle dove, give me a pigeon. And he began to get all these things. And he told him, he said, now cut it down and I'm going to come down and make a covenant with you. Now, this is important because remember now, we're talking about letting the word, let the word do the work. So what happened when God made the covenant with Abraham, it settled all argument. When that covenant got made, when, God, when Abraham realized that God made a covenant, it settled his own consciousness to the point where, okay, God cannot lie because he just made a covenant. So I don't care I am 100 years old. If God told me I'm going to have a son, then my God, if it takes me being 300 years old, I'm still going to have a son. 
I can't consider my own body. I don't care how my body feels. I don't care how my body looks because I understand the power of the covenant. If God said it, it's a settled issue. Ooh, glory to God. Come on, shout, let the word do the work. Now, he didn't stagger the promise of God through a leave. But look at look what it said. But was what? Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. Giving the glory to God when? While he's waiting. While he is waiting. While he is waiting, he's giving glory to God. And what's happening? It's strengthening his faith. It's strengthening. That's why his faith was strong. His faith was strong because while he was waiting on God, he didn't stagger at the promise. He didn't get into a pity party. He didn't let his emotions rule him. He didn't let what was going on happen. To him. He didn't let his mind begin to take control. He No, he, he continued. I'm not considering my own body. No, I must continue to give God glory because if God promised me a son, then my God, I got to have a son. Now, it's not up for me to try to figure it out. All I know is if God promised it, then God going to make it happen. Yeah. Ooh, glory to God. Now you, you see, now, you see how we got to get out of trying to make it happen? Are you seeing this here? Now, look at this here. Watch this. Watch this here. Oh, man. Being what? Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded about what? Now, remember now, remember, let me, I'm slow down. I'm getting all excited now. <laughs> Y'all don't laugh at me. I'm getting excited. Now, remember, the first scripture I gave, the scriptures was written for what? The scriptures were written for what? The scriptures were written for what? So what are we supposed to learn from the scriptures? How to do things. What to do. Because the scriptures were written for our learning. This is the manual for life. This is the manual on how we live. So the scriptures were written for our learning. Through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. So my hope and comfort is going to come from this when I learn what to do. Are you listening to me? See, we're learning what to do tonight. We're in, cl we in class tonight. We're in school tonight. I said we're in school tonight. We're in class. Are you listening to me? We're learning what to do. How? Through the scriptures. And because we're learning what to do, now we can have comfort and now we can have hope. There is no hopeless situation in here tonight. I said there is no hopeless situation in here tonight. I said, there is no hopeless situation here tonight. Why? You getting understanding and you learning what to do. So look what it said. Being fully persuaded, watch this, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Come on, read verse 21 out loud for me again. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Being fully persuaded. Come on, shout with me. I am fully, fully persuaded that what God promised, what God promised he, will he will perform it. Now look at verse 20 in the Amplified right quick. No unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtly unquestioned, concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong. And was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. He grew strong and begot in power as, as, as he gave praise. So that's part, that's part of your growing when you learn how to praise while you're waiting. When you learn how to praise through the storm. When you learn how to praise when things are not going so well. When you learn how to praise through a terrible situation, through a tragic situation, through a difficult time, that's, that, that's, that's when you're growing. You're growing in faith when you do that. That's why the enemy would love to do to every last one of us not to get us praised during a tough time. Want to get us to quit during a tough time. Want to get us in a, in a, in a sad mode during a tough time. 
when you're going through a fire. Man, yeah, you know, every time I praise the Lord, pray that day, they, they go, there he go again. That pastor, every time I turn, he turn around. He talking about look at somebody and tell them, well, I ain't looking at nobody. <laughs> You know, all kind of stuff. I mean, he tried to put all the, you know, I, I, I just don't feel like praising. I don't, I, I'm not, you know, I'm going through this. So I don't feel like I ain't even going to do it. Well, he want us to all, he want all of us to feel that way. But as we praise, as we praise and we push past this emotion and this flesh, that, that this, the, the, the war that's going on in your mind. But as you just stand up, you may have to fight standing up. Amen. You may have to stand up in faith Amen. saying, praise God. His mercy endures forever. Amen. I know y'all singing something else, but I got to sing praise. I got to sing what's ministered, what's building me at the moment. I'll catch up with y'all in a minute, praise team. But right now, let, let, me, just, let me just get enough in me. To get this thing going, where, because I need, I need, I need my own gas right now. Well, you understand? As he prays, are you listening to me? He grew. Look at this here, and it says, verse twenty-one: fully, fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep His word and to do what He had promised. Good God Almighty, fully satisfied. Man, y'all need to write that scripture right down, right there. Fully satisfied. You need to meditate on that. Fully satisfied. You need to get up in the morning and say, Lord, you have, I'm fully satisfied. You need to, I mean, on your, in, in the middle of the day, you need to say, God, I'm fully satisfied. Satisfied about what? That not only are you able, but you're mighty to keep your word and to do exactly what you promised. I'm fully satisfied. I'm, I'm fully aware. I'm fully persuaded. And you even got to do that by faith. Because that can be a war going on in your mind telling you, you just talking. You just know, no, death and life was in the power of my tongue. I'll have whatever I say that I'm going to keep saying it until my mind get in line with it. Until my emotions line up with it. Until my feelings line up with it. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. No, ma no matter what. Okay, I may, have to, I may have to just close my eyes for a minute. But that's okay. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm fully satisfied. I'm fully aware. I am fully persuaded that God will keep his word. Hallelujah. So when he say he supplied my every need, who he keeping his word? When he said, great is the peace of my children, for they shall be taught of the Lord. He keeping his word. Are you listening to me? A thousand shall fall on my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh to me. He keeping his word. He keeping his word. Are you listening to me? The Lord shall increase me more and more. He keeping his word. Let's go a little bit further here. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Are y'all getting anything out of this tonight? Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 2. We're talking about mountain moving faith. Let the word do the work. Right now, all I'm doing now is just really laying the foundation on why it's important to trust the word. First Corinthians chapter 2. Look at uh, verse 12 right quick. Now, here we go. We get ready to get into some good meat here. Now we have, verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That what we might know the things that are what are freely given to us. How? By God. By God. So things are freely given to us. How? 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 By who? God. By your paycheck. God. By your job. God. Things are freely given to us by God. So now I need to find out what is the things that have been freely given to me by God. So if it's been freely given to me by God, it's not costing me anything. 
Not a thing. What's been freely given to me by God? Watch this. Hold your place there and go to back up one. First Corinthians chapter one. Well, that is no second Corinthians. I apologize. Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one. See, remember now, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we receive all the promises of God. How? By faith. By faith is how we access the promises of God. So if I access the promises of God by faith, I also access those things that have been freely given to me by faith. Are you listening to me? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse uh, 20, 20 right quick. And we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians in a minute. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. For what? All the promises of God are in him are and amen unto the glory of God. For all the promises of God are yes and amen. So when you look at the, this word of God, the word of God is the promises of God. Come on, shout the word of God, the word of God is, is the, promises of God the promises of God that has freely, that has freely been given to me. Now I'm going to challenge your faith. I'm getting ready to challenge your thinking now. I'm getting ready to challenge you. Watch this. If it's been freely given to me, why don't I believe it? If God answers already, yes, it's yours. Why, 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 don't, why I don't believe it? Why am I struggling with it? Why am I struggling with it? Why am I struggling with what's already mine? Can I, okay, let me just give you some scriptures. Let me just do that to kind of help you out. Go to Psalm 112. Go to Psalm 112. Let, 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 me, let me just do that. Let me do that. Psalm 112. Now remember, all things, we have not received the spirit of the world. We have not received the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit of God, which has freely given us all things. So now, Remember now, the world didn't have a, don't have a covenant. The world don't have a covenant. At, at that time, we were strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope. Ephesians 2. Having no hope without God in the world. Having no hope. At that time, we were strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope. So when, when you and I was in the world... We was a stranger to the covenants of these promises. So we didn't have no hope. That's why we couldn't rely on the promises of God. We, there wasn't ours. So that's why we had to work to make a living. That's why we had to, to, to go out and make stuff happen. Because we didn't have a covenant. We was without hope. We, that's why we was worried and depressed on how we're going to make it from one week to the next and how we're going to make We had no hope. We were, we were strangers from the covenants of promise. But the scripture said, but now in Christ Jesus, who once were far off, we've been made nigh by the blood of Christ. In other words, because we're in Christ now, all that changes. We now have covenants of promise. We now are, are, are in the family of God. So now all things have been freely given to us. Amen. Okay, now what's one of the all things that have been freely given us? Are you at Psalm 112? Look what it says. Here. Hold your place at 1 Corinthians because we're going back. Now remember now, let the word do the work. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. That what? Delighteth greatly in his commandments. That's why I love the word of God. I love the word of God because there are benefits that comes with loving the word. Now think about it. To people who say it don't take all that. To people who think that you don't have to uh, uh, spend time in the word. Well, you cut yourself off from some benefits. Why? You, you still got the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world is what's don't, is, is what's don't want to enjoy the word. 
But you now got the spirit of God. So look what he said again. Praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man. Look at it. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. That delighteth greatly his commandments. Look at verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Come on read verse 3. Read it again. Now what I'm doing right now is locating your way of thinking. Because he said all things have been freely given to you by God. Through all things were written for our learning. That through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. Now, what's the comfort now? I don't have to live a life of lack no more. Why don't I have to live a life of lack no more? Because he, I've now just discovered a promise from God. Just like Abraham discovered a promise when God told me he was going to have a son, it settled all argument. He knew from that day, from that moment, that when God, when God cut the covenant, he knew a son was coming out of him. Amen. Somehow, some way. Why? Because God cannot lie. Amen. He cannot lie. So what are we seeing now? We're also seeing in you and I today's time, God still cannot lie. Now he said, if I fear him, if I delight in his commandments, then I'll be blessed. But not only that, he said, my seed shall be mighty upon the earth. My seed, so I'm looking for my children, my great-grandchildren to serve God. They have to. They have to. I said they have to. I said they have to. Why? I'm covenant. I'm covenant. And because I'm covenant, all what's connected to me will be covenant too. But now remember now, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. I will not have in my life no different than what I think. How I think is the garden to my life. My thinking, the way I think, will produce my life. So I got to think that way. I got to begin to start thinking that way. Wait a minute. Everything around me got to be blessed. Everything around me will be blessed. I ain't got to knock nobody on the side of the head. I ain't got to do this. No, I ain't got to fuss. I ain't got to argue. I ain't got to throw shoes. <laughs> I ain't got to throw books, no. No, I just, all I got to do is just keep walking in covenant. Just keep walking in covenant. Knowing with the revelation that the covenant that I'm walking in, my seed should, my seed should be mighty upon the earth. But now, not only that, look what else he said. Look what else he said that comes along with that benefit. He said, wealth and riches shall be in my house. Come on and shout, I am wealthy by God. I've been anointed for wealth. Now, let me ask you something. Right, I'm getting ready. I'm, I'm getting ready, really getting ready. We get, really get ready to deal with it now. If Jesus Christ himself was in the flesh and just said what I just said, how would you respond? Would you respond differently than how you just responded? If Jesus Christ himself was in the flesh, and just told you that wealth and riches is in your house. Say, say with me, wealth and riches is in your house. How would you would have responded the way you just responded? See, watch this. That's where the church is missing it at. Hold your place there and go to Matthew chapter 8. This is where we have been missing it because a lot of things we're saying that we don't believe and Mark 11 said whatsoever I mean whosoever shall say unto this mountain be not removed be not cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass he shall have whatever he say 
But there's a lot of things we're saying out of ritual, out of habit, and out of a mental ascent, but out of revelation. Whew. Watch this here. Watch this here. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Now remember the, the, the picture I just gave you. Would you respond in, if Jesus himself was in the flesh? Watch this. Matthew chapter 8. Look at verse 5. I told you, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to jack you up in this church. I, I'm going to take your faith to some places. I'm going to take your faith to some places you have never thought existed. Are you listening to me? Look at Matthew chapter 8. Look at verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a satyrian beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Watch this. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I will personally come in the flesh and heal him. I will come and heal him in the flesh. Watch this. The satyrian answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But what? Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. To my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Look at verse 13. And Jesus said unto the satyrian, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Wow. Look at verse 10 again. When Jesus heard what he said, he marveled. And said to them that follow him, he turned to his disciples and said, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel. Y'all don't even talk like this. Let me, let me just give you the picture. In other words, Jesus, in other words, the satyrian said, Lord, you ain't even got to come to my house. Your physical presence is not even needed. All I need is your word because your word can do exactly what you do in the flesh. You don't even have to come in my house presently. Y'all don't even, I don't need your physical presence. All I need is your word. Then he began to qualify why he believed that. He said, because I am a man under authority and I have soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he goeth. To another come and he cometh. To my servant. In other words, he began to let Jesus know because I understand authority and I recognize authority is in your words. So you ain't even got to come in my house. In other words, what's happening today? The word of God today replaces the physical presence of Jesus. I said the word of God today replaces the physical presence of Jesus. I just gave you the picture just a minute ago. Would you say, uh, 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 would you repeat what you repeated earlier? Would you say it the way you say it if Jesus presently was here? Most people say no. But see, that's what we got to get past. His presence is here. Jesus is here. His word is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. So if you waited, and see, that's what's going on. We're waiting for something to happen in order for us to believe. We waiting to see something before we believe. We waiting to experience something before we believe. No, I got to believe before I see. That's when I'm going to experience the power of this word. I got I to gotta do it with conviction. I got to know anytime I speak this, that's just like Jesus himself speaking it. Are you listening to me? But see, what happens is our minds get in the way. And say, I can't think like that. Why can't you? When the scripture already said that he has made you equal with him. Good God Almighty. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing this here? I can't say that. I can't talk like that. Why can't you? Remember, that's why I gave you Romans 15, 4. The scriptures was learning. 
And you know what? I missed the scripture too. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go to Romans, back, Romans 4 again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I missed something. Romans chapter 4 again. Look at, look at this. Because I stopped at 21. I wasn't supposed to stop there. Forgive me. Look at verse 22. Ain't y'all glad y'all got a pastor to be led by the Holy Spirit? You see, you see how he did that to me? He, he took me back and said, no, you got to go back. Look at verse 22. And look at this. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. In other words, God counted what Abraham, Abraham's belief for righteousness. He counted the way Abraham was thinking and his, his action as righteousness, which means right standing with God. Look at verse 23. Here we go. This is what I really want you to get to. Now, it was not written for his sake alone. Everything that was everything that we just read, it wasn't just written for Abraham by itself. Watch this here. Glory to God. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. In other words, it wasn't written, written just for Jesus, I mean for Abraham alone. No, it was written for us. These things are given to us as an example. Why? So we can be fully persuaded. So that we'll know, we fully assured that God is able to keep his word. That we'll know that God is a covenant keeping God. That he keeps his word. And that he'll do exactly what he said he'll do. That was written for our comfort. So I got to find comfort in that. Are you listening to me tonight? Find comfort in that. Comfort in what? Knowing that God keeps his word. Come on, shout God keeps his word. Keeps his so word. that's where I get my comfort in. I get my comfort that God keeps his word. And this thing ain't going to be like this always. God keeps his word. Oh, it's got to turn around because God keeps his word. Oh, I know it's going to turn because God keeps his word. Oh, I'm coming out of this because God keeps his word. Oh, this thing has got to get better because God keeps his word. Oh, I ain't no, oh, this ain't going to stop me because God keeps his word. Oh, this ain't going to take me out because God keeps his word. Oh, I ain't going under because God keeps his word. Oh, the way is going to be made because God keeps his word. Oh, I'm going to shout in advance because God keeps his word. I'm not giving in to that no more because God keeps his word. That's not going to discourage me another day. Why? Because God keeps his word. And I'm fully persuaded. Good God Almighty, that God is able and mighty to keep his word. So when you see me talking bold, I'm not trying to be arrogant. No, I'm bold in my God. I'm confident in my God that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask a thing. Are you seeing this here tonight? Glory to God. Come on, shout, I'm winning. Every time. Every time. But now watch this here. Go to Psalm 107 right quick. We got, we got a good time. I'm going to let you go. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Let the word do the word. But I got to let the word do the word. I got to trust it. I got to trust it. I got to trust this thing. I got to trust it. That's why, that's why I'm really urging this body to come together as one. Man, speak the same thing. Man, let's, let's, let's move heaven in this place. Are you listening? Now, man, we ain't being no traditional church. We ain't being no religion. No, no, we're going to move heaven in this church. Are you listening to me? We ain't going to just set. We, we're not going to settle for status quo or just come to church. No, we're going to move heaven here, man. We're going to see lives change. People transform. People lives being brought out of darkness into the light. We're going to see people addictions being broken off. Bodies being totally healed and restored. Lives being changed. Mental state being turned around. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? I said are you listening to me tonight? Are you listening to me? We can't settle for status quo. I'm just going to church. No, 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 no. No. You no, know, you know, this is not no. When you come here, you're not just going to church. You coming into a life-changing experience. I said you coming into a life-changing experience. 
if I got to come out here every single day and speak into this atmosphere myself, you coming into a life changing experience. I am, I am, man, I am on purpose and intentionally coming out here every time I stand before you to sow this word in you. Oh my God, Psalm 107. Look at verse 20 right quick. Are you there? Psalm 107, look at verse 20. He sent his what? Word and healed them and what? Delivered them from what? Their destruction. So where did healing come from? Where did, where did the, uh, uh, the healing from their destructions come from? Where did the deliverance come from? So how, was, how did the word come? It was sent. I said the word was sent. And he said that and when he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them. Now watch this. He sent his word. He sent. Yeah, Wanda got it. He sent his word. He sent his word. In other words, he's not going to send it again. Oh, man. Good. Come on, folks. He sent his word. He's not going to go back to heaven and send it again. So since he already sent his word and healing is already in the earth, deliverance is already in the earth, wealth and riches is already in the earth, everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness is already in the earth because when he sent his word, he sent everything that we need. So, okay, so how can I get that sent word manifested in my life? I got to say the same thing he said about my life. So just like he sent the word and he did it by his mouth, I got to put that same word in my mouth. But not only do I got to put it in my mouth, I got to put it in my heart. A good man out of the good treasure, out of the good deposits of his heart, bring forth good things. An evil man out of evil treasure, evil deposits of his heart, bring forth evil things. Every man that, that uh, according to his heart, let us speak. He speak Matthew 12. Let's just look at it. I ain't trying to miss it. Let me, I ain't going to mess it up. Matthew 12. No, you need to see that. Matthew 12, verse 35. No, you need to see that. I ain't even finna mess that scripture up. Because I ain't finna say nothing that he didn't say. Matthew 12. Look at verse 33. Watch this here. Are you ready for this? Matthew 12. Look at verse 33. Watch this. Hold your seatbelt. Either what? Make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit will be corrupt. I am responsible for my tree. My tree represents my life. So if I want my life to be good, I got to make it good. I got to make it good. I'm either going to make it good or I'm going to make it evil. I'm making it. I'm making my life either way. I'm making it good or I'm making it evil. I'm making it. I am responsible for my life. Remember, he sent his word. So he already sent his word. So now it's my responsibility on what I'm going to do with what he's already sent me. Are you seeing this? Either make the tree. I like that part, make, because make means I got, I got to put forth some action. I got, I got to put pressure on this thing. Because there are times things try to go one way, I got to make it go this way. When the storms of life come to try to make me go this way, I got to make it go back this way. When things come to try to make things happen this way, no, I got to make it go this way. So in other words, in other words, ain't no cloud coming in my room. Ain't no cloud coming in your car that's going to make you feel joyful. Ain't no angel going to show up and say, hell Mary. No, 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 I, I, you, no, none of that's going to happen to give you some joy and peace. You got to make it happen. Are you listening to me? Why, why is that important? Because, see, just because we are Christians and the world is looking at us 
And, 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 and just because we're Christians, we think things are going to happen automatic. Things don't happen automatic. I thought it did. When I, got, when I first got saved, I mean, you heard this song, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus right now. Oh, Lord, I'm coming. Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming because I'm frustrated about what I'm going through. I'm coming because I got some stuff going on and I don't know how to come out. I'm coming because I'm in a very bad emotional state. But what they didn't tell me after I came, I'm not responsible to change. And when I go back and because I hadn't made any change, now the devil can convince me that I'm not saved. Now, since I've been convinced that I'm not saved, that's what makes it easy for me to go back to my old ways. Preach, Pastor. Are you listening to me? But now when I come to Jesus, I got to know that, wait a minute, I came to Jesus, my soul is changed. I mean, my, my spirit is reborn, but I got to work on my soul. I got to work on my mind, my will, and my emotions. I got to work on, I got to work on this flesh. I got this flesh want to continue to do things that it used to do. This flesh still want to behave the way it used to behave. This flesh still want to respond the way it used to respond. Now, I got to work on that. Now, God is not going to come on me and change that. He changed my inward parts, but he ain't going to change my flesh. That's why that song, how that song go? Uh, how that song go? Uh, I looked at my hands. That ain't how it go. And you a praise singer. You a praise singer too. She just singing it fast. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. She wrong. I'm past. I'm always right. She wrong. Even though she's right and I'm wrong, you still supposed to say I'm right. <laughs> say no, Pastor. No, I ain't doing that. No, I ain't gonna say you right when you're wrong. I looked at my hands, and my hands look new. I looked at my feet. David Gilmer head did not change when he got saved. <laughs> he got the same size head that he had when we worked together. All right, back to back to twelve. Let me go on. Let me go on. Let me go on. And they said, Lord, I'm, I'm on streaming too, ain't? Oh Lord, we can't put this out there. I'm cutting up. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Matthew 12. Okay. Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. And I just said I'm working on it too. Matthew 12. Lord, let me go on. Dick looking like, Lord, I got to get him. Matthew 12. Let me go on. Lord, have mercy. Let me close out. Look at where, where I'm at. Jesus. 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is what? Known how? By his fruit. The tree is known how? So when you look at me, you should be looking at the fruit of what I produce. Because the tree is known by his fruit. Now look at, let's look at this here. So now, remember now, either make the tree good. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of what? The abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bring forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bring forth evil things. But I say unto you, listen to what Jesus is saying. Listen to what Jesus is saying now. Jesus said, but I say unto you, I'm now releasing this authority to you. I'm now giving you permission. I am now telling you now what is your responsibility from this day forward. I'm saying unto you, what did he say to us? What did he say to us? That every idle word, every non-productive word that you speak. Now, I know I just joked a minute with Dave. That's a non-productive word. And even though that's okay sometimes, but even with that, you got to be watchful sometimes even with stuff like that. You can't make that stuff a lifestyle. You can't joke all the time. You can't play all the time. You got to know when it's time to speak, when it's time to be quiet. You got to know when it's time what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Are you listening to me? Every idle 
word that men shall speak. Watch this. Watch this now. He shall what? He shall give an account thereof in the what? The day of judgment. Now the day of judgment is not the judgment day when you stand before Jesus. The day of judgment Jesus is talking about here is the day that what you said manifests. The day that you seen the thing that you've been constantly talking about. The day that it show up, the thing that you constantly been saying. I, you know, well, it's struggling. Uh, it's rough out here. I don't know how I'm going to make it. It's tough. I just don't know if I'm going to. It's so hard to get along. It's so hard to get along. It's just so hard. Just can't make it on my own. Mm -hmm. Just can't make it on my own. Sing it, preacher. It's so hard to get along. So hard to get along. I'm climbing up on the rough side of the mountain. And I'm doing my best to make it in. Boy, you singing, boy. <laughs> trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I got to cry sometime, I got to cry sometime. Trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I got to cry sometime, I got to cry sometime. Late awake at night, late awake at night. But that's all right. No, it ain't all right. You got, you got sleep out there. You got insomnia. You got ring around your eyes. <laughs> that ain't all right. He'll fix it after a while. No, he said he giveth his beloved sleep. That's what he said. Okay, Lord, I, I need to close. Look at verse, let me close. Verse 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be what? Condemned. Condemned. I am making by tree. I could be singing it or talking it. I'm still making it. I'm creating my life. I'm creating it. I'm making it. I'm making it good. Watch this. Knowingly or unknown, or unknowingly. Because I mean, I mean, I, I was there. I pick up my wife all the time. I said she, boy, she used to love them singings. I told her, I said, you know, you like them singings. Do 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 do. Oh yeah. Do 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 do. Oh yeah. Y'all come on. Lord, let me close. Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? But we didn't know. We didn't know. We thought that was church. We didn't know. But we know now. Watch this. And I want to end with this. When you come to the knowledge of the truth, you got to be willing to break out of those things that you now realize that you didn't need to be part of. And what's, and watch this now, listen to what I'm getting ready to say. And what's going to really free you is when you're able to turn back and people want to pull you back in that. But you got to make a decision. I'm standing where I'm at. Are you listening to me? Come on, let's stand with me. Let's give God praise tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I love you guys tonight love you. I want the best of God to be manifested in your life. I know that God is able. But I've also learned there are things that 
you have to do, things is not just going to automatically happen. You got to push in. You got to press in on the promises. You got to feed your spirit the word of God. These are things that you got to do.